What's up guys, today we're going to be looking at how to use crossfades in Reason. Someone commented on a video about that, so I was like, hey, let's, let's do a little tutorial on how to make crossfades or how to use crossfades. I use crossfades two different ways for two different things. One of them is probably not technically a crossfade, but it's still something I use all the time so we'll start with that because I haven't actually done that in this track yet um, so I do a lot of cutting up of audio and, and glitchy stuff like this and when you're doing that often you get like little pops and stuff happening at the start of the different audio clips. What I typically do is go through and delete everything <clears throat> that I have muted. So I'm left with just the audio clips that I'm using. That way it doesn't get in the way if I'm trying to do it like in a bulk kind of fashion. Just realized I was <laughs> I was deleting everything using the delete button instead of the two button. Two is what I've reprogrammed my delete button to be in reason. But I've been using Ableton a lot recently, which I haven't been able to do that in Ableton yet. So let's have a listen to what we've got here. So here's all my audio that could possibly have little glitches in it. I think we need to listen to it one at a time to really hear. Okay, that one's fine. So that one there has like a few too many glitches. So one thing that you can do is highlight all of this. I usually go fade in by five and fade out as well by five. And then I zoom in on certain clips that need some more and increase that as needed to get rid of any kind of like clicks. <laughs> I was like, I was like, why is it not working? Cause, uh, cause you know, I was fading out all that time. Good form. Yeah. Yeah. Helps if you're moving the right control. Pro tip. Probably doesn't need to be that high then. Hearing it like a tiny bit, so we just... There we go. If you zoom in, you can see what that's doing to the fade. And you can see that the fade is up here. So that one there. Let's <laughs> select the right one this time. Um, based on the other one, I'm going to put it like 20 something. Still got a little bit, so I'm just going to increase that a bit more. That's pretty fine. One thing I've noticed with these controls up here, you have to make sure that highlighted throws me every now and then. Cool. And so I'll check this one here as well. There's only a couple of these that are bothering me, like this first one. I'm not sure about this one because it's kind of almost percussive, like I kind of want that hit there. So I'm just going to listen to it in context and see what I think. I 
I am gonna get rid of it. The other thing to keep in mind in this particular example is I do have side chains on that channel. So it's probably ducking a bit anyway. But I do think it sounds better if I do a little bit of a fade. Just while we're talking about these fades, another interesting thing is if we go back to this channel here and highlight them all, you can see there are these little equal signs up here next to these parameters. Um, oh, <laughs> let's not do that channel because I didn't adjust any fades in that one. Um, so on this one here, there are these little equal signs up here next to these parameters. What they mean, they indicate that these clips that I've highlighted don't all have the same settings. So you can see if I highlight these clips here, Transpose doesn't have a little equal sign next to it because all of these clips are down an octave. Whereas if I highlight these clips here, Transpose does have a little equal sign next to it because only some of these audio clips here are down an octave. Like if I scroll through, you can see how the Transpose is different for each of those. But what happens if we click on one of these little equals things is it, we can see there it highlights these match values. So what that does is it basically sets every clip to have the same fade out as the one that I have selected, I think, or match values here. Now every clip will have a fade in of five. So it just evens out all the values. I'm not sure how it decides what values it's going to match. Okay, I think it's from whatever clip selected first, because that clip's 26, that one's five. So now if I highlight from the 26, and then click match values, then this clip here is 26, that clip there is 26, yeah. So it matches the values from the first clip that you have selected. So that's um, it's good to know. Personally I haven't found an immensely useful help for that in my own workflow. But it is good to know if you want to kind of like reset some values or match the values in the rest of a selection to whatever the first clip is. That's what that little equal sign tells us. I remember being a little confused by that when I first saw it. I was like, what is this for? So, that's the first kind of fades that I use in Reason. The other kind of fades that we've got are crossfades. So if I'm like editing a vocal, if you double click on that and go to the edit window, um, the comp edit, okay? So I'm editing this vocal. When I recorded this, I did like three or four takes. Now this comp edit view is pretty sick. I really enjoy it. So this channel that I've got at the top, this lead vocal bounced, that is what is the result of this different takes that I comp together. So you can see that here kind of grayed out. I took this part from this take, 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 and I inserted silence in between. Um, so if I discovered a new trick. If you hold down command and shift when in this comp view, I, I know I, it will play back. Close and tell you I, Yo, I'm gonna use that feature. That would be a really, really good way to check different parts when you are comping a vocal. Hmm. Wow. This has baffled me. It's been a long time since I've gone back to try and re-edit a comp that I've done. And I have forgotten how. Slash if you can. I think I might need to make a video about just everything you can do to editing vocals on uh, Reason. Oh my gosh. Oh. 
I figured it out. It was so simple. It was so simple. Okay, let's go back to the first. Let's go back to the first joke we were working on. All right. So I've got my vocal. I was getting all confused because I'm in computer and it's not letting me do anything. Click on that button. Lesson learned. Wow, this has been a journey. Yeah. Okay. So this is your monitor button. So it's bounced a bounce of all of the comps I've made and I have to turn this monitor button off I see it really. and then it displays the comps for me and that sh uh, command shift function still works. That's a cool feature. I like that. Um, on that. It's been a while since I've done vocals. This is like the first vocal track I've been working on in probably over a year. I haven't really recorded vocals in over a year. So I haven't used this comp feature really in about that long. Okay, so monitor, monitor off. Now I can see what I've comped. So to do crossfades, you jump up to this little uh, flag marker thing here. If I solo this, I see it really I see it. If I want it to be a little smoother, I can just grab this marker and pull that. Because it's crossfading the silence, it's not going to have like that much of a difference. But let's just say, for example, that I cut the clip here and switch to this clip here. You can hear that shift because I'm doing it mid word. That's where this crossfade handle is really helpful. Because it removes that break in the audio. You don't want it to be like too extreme. Otherwise it sounds like <laughs> there's two voices. But just enough to get rid of any kind of clips. Yeah. I see it written in the stars. So, that's how you do crossfading in Reason. Super simple. You just have to grab the little um, flag marker and just drag it out as much as you need to crossfade it. Um, and you can see it reflected here at the start of each of these comps. And don't do what I did. Don't forget about these monitor buttons. Otherwise, you end up looking like an idiot when you're trying to record a tutorial. Whew, all right, we're not saving that session. Well, that's it for that video, guys. Hope that was helpful. Um, if you did enjoy that, check out some of my other videos. I've got a really good one on keyboard commands for Reason, the best keyboard commands you could use in Reason. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel. Give this video a like, leave a comment. Um, let me know if there's anything else you want to know about Reason or how I use it because um, I'll make a video about it.